The world is on pause right now. Due to the pandemic, the whole world is standing still. A lot of countries are already in lockdown and some other countries have strengthened their laws regarding social distancing. The current situation is putting a lot of pressure on the whole world right now and this also including the photography world. Without a doubt, people who make a living from photography, who rely on public events, on social encounters, on weddings and so on, will probably hit hardest. But also for us, hobbyists, enthusiasts, camera geeks out there, the current situation is incisive. The possibilities to just go out and shoot are quite limited right now, especially for street photographers. Because during these times we have to remember that taking care of each other means taking a step back, and creating a distance, at least physically. Some people might even put their photography on pause right now and wait it out. But let me tell you, I don't think it's the right time to put your camera in a box and let it collect dust, but it's the perfect time to think outside of the box, to push our creative and photographic boundaries to the limit. To help you get inspired in which ways you can still pursue photography, I created a list of 10 photography-related things you can do during lockdown or during social distancing. Without further ado, let's get started. Number 1. Document what is around you. Street photographers often seek for the crowds of people, events happening, the busy and the fast life. But currently the streets are empty and events got cancelled. However, this is exactly what we can document, even though empty streets are not what we would usually be looking for. During the few occasions we are allowed to leave the house, we should bring a camera anyway. Don't get me wrong, you should stay inside as much as possible to not put you or any other people in danger. But during the small occasions like grocery shopping, a short walk in nature or the way to work, we would usually not bother to bring a camera are our only chances to shoot right now. And also just imagine taking a look at these pictures in a couple of months or years. They might be of extreme value to remember the crazy times we were living in. Number two, take pictures inside. As banal as it might sound, the possibilities to shoot inside are still endless. This is a great time to explore different genres of photography, play around with still life, or take pictures of your family or friends or furry friends you are living with. Even if you do not have an expensive studio setup, it is the perfect time to test out different lighting situations. Get creative with different light sources and gels, take pictures in different locations around your house you were not thinking of before. Number 3. Keep up with some scanning. If you scan your negatives at home, it can happen quite quickly that your negatives pile up. I usually only manage to maybe scan a roll after work and yeah, it's burdensome. So this is a good possibility to melt down that pile once and for all and invest a whole day into scanning. Number 4. Reorganize your archive. This can relate to either an analog or a digital archive. If you have done it correctly from the start, this might be obsolete for you, but if you were neglecting the administrative side of photography, now is your chance to get some system into the chaos. Me, for example, I took my time to completely rearrange my analog archive. Before, I had pretty much everything in one folder, simply giving my negatives running numbers. But since I shoot more and more film, my negatives got more and more as well and the old system was no longer efficient for me. Now I have separated between color and black and white negatives and divided them by year, so the name of my negatives match the files of the scan on my computer. And honestly, it's so satisfying to be able to find every shot you're looking for within seconds. Number 5. Find some old gems. Since we are already digging in our archives, this might also be a good time to dig out some old and long forgotten gems. Our perspectives and aesthetical views might be totally different today than they were a couple of years ago and shots we did not give much attention to in the past might be a banger today. 
It might also be of interest to re-edit all the images if you still have the raw files or raw scans. Number 6. Print your pictures. In my opinion, printing your pictures is something every photographer should do anyway. A physical photograph is the end result of the whole process and seeing your picture printed in the real world is a totally different experience than seeing it on screen or a teeny tiny negative. Whether you want to work on a zine, a book, a printed portfolio or just print your best images on paper, we have a lot of time on our desks to do so right now. Plus, during times like these where we cannot show our loved ones how much they mean to us by meeting them, a print could be a lovely gesture. Number 7. Develop your own film. Of course we should support our local labs and continue to send film to them, but in case this is currently not possible and your labs nearby are not running anymore, this could be your chance to get into film developing yourself. You can still get tanks and supplies delivered online and by searching up caffeinol recipes you can easily make your own film developer by ingredients most of us already have at home. And a little bonus thought, lockdown time is darkroom time. The same as with film developing also goes to darkroom printing. Believe me, you can easily spend hours after hours in the darkroom without even noticing it. Apart from the chemicals and supplies, all you need for darkroom printing is a dark and light tight room and some running water nearby. Number 8. Read photography books. Learn from the masters by studying photography books. There is a difference between the sheer consumption of media and the proper digestion of media in my opinion. If we do it right and mindfully try to understand pictures of great photographers, we might also come a step closer in improving our own photography. It is about studying light, composition, framing and the way how the photographer worked the scene all regarded in the historical context. Number 9. Experiment with other forms of art. When we break photography down to its core, it's a visual form of art. Doing photography therefore basically comes down to training your eye and more so the coordination between your eye and your hand. Training your vision and eye-hand coordination can also be achieved through other forms of art as for example drawing, painting, sculpturing and so on. By painting landscapes or people, we can also get a better understanding of composition, of form, of colors and contrasts, which can later be crucial for our photography. I personally do also have the opinion that different forms of art are interchangeable and go hand in hand with each other, so that painting is the same as photography, just in a different medium. Number 10. Connect online. Even though our possibilities to connect in person are limited, it's the digital's place to shine right now. Not only is it a good time to work on an Instagram for example, a website or any other sort of digital appearance, but also to connect to other photographers. For this purpose, some photographers also use possibilities as online streams to connect on a regular basis, which is a great thing to support. Alright, that is it. This was my list of 10 photography related things you can do to survive the lockdown. I hope that some of these ideas were helpful or maybe created a spark of inspiration. If you have other ideas on what to do during the lockdown or during social distancing, please let me and all of the other people know in the comments down below. And also feel free to use the comment section down below to connect to each other. And last but not least, I would like to say stay healthy, stay safe, and most importantly, stay home. See you next time.